Hello children, welcome to our ABS Children's Program. And before we start, we're going to sing this song, which is Saviour Like a Shepherd Lead Us. We're going to sing two stanzas at a count of three. One, two, three. Saviour like a shepherd lead us, much we need thy tender care. In thy pleasant pastures feed us, for our use thy foes prepare. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us, thine we are. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Thou hast bought us, thine we are. We are thine, do thou befriend us, Be the guardian of our way. Keep thy flock from sin, defend us, seek us when we go astray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, hear, O oh, hear us when we pray. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, Hear, O oh, hear us when we pray. That stands as well. Thou hast promised to receive us, poor and sinful though we be. Thou hast mercy to relieve us, grace to cleanse and power to free. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Blessed Jesus, blessed Jesus, early let us turn to Thee. Let us open this time with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this day that we can come, that we can come to learn from your word. We thank you, Father, for how you've been with the children. And we pray, Father, even as we continue with our missionary story, Father, we pray that thou will use this account to lead us closer to thee, to remind us of our first love, which is the Lord Jesus Christ and to remind us that we are safe to serve you. Father, we pray that you prepare the hearts of the children, even to listen to the lesson. And we pray, Father, that you will go before us at this time, asking thee in Jesus' name. Amen. The title of the chapter that we're going to go through from this book, all right, John G. Payton, South Sea Island Rescue, is... I'll stand by the mission man. I'll stand by the mission man, all right? It's written on your screen. I'm going to continue with the account. Now listen as Auntie Tammy reads. Large waves crash into the canoe, soaking everyone in it. John begged the men to stay out at sea as they were now only two miles from the home of the other missionaries. They wanted to go to the home of these other missionaries, but then there was this big storm, right? So he begged the man, said, continue, let's continue, despite what's happening, right? The, the large waves, but let's continue, we're only this near to the home of these other missionaries. But what did they, did they do? They ignored his pleas, right? Because these people, okay, the men who were out at sea, they had friends living on this southern part of Tanner and they felt that it's safer to go there than to be at sea, to continue at sea. And John looked at the man who was holding the large pot of food he was bringing to Mr. and Mrs. Madison. This must not be lost, this pot of food. 
He was grateful to these powerful tenants led by his friend Chief Nukamara. They had paddled strongly for a long time but now needed great courage and skill. Why? Because they have to ride through the waves that's ahead of them. This can be very scary. As more waves broke over them, John could hardly see ahead. He could hardly see what is in front of him. This next wave should do it. Go on my word, get ready now, shouted their captain. For a few moments, John felt a huge force, like a huge power, lift the canoe and he quickly prayed to the Lord. The crew struck down their paddles with great strength to carry them in the right direction. And they made it. They went past these big and powerful waves. So men came half swimming from the shore. There were some men from the shore that came to help them. One of them caught John, managed to grab John just in time as he jumped into the water and brought him to the beach. John fell over onto the sand, thanking God for his safety. Looking out to the rest, he saw one man dragging the canoe in and another going towards him, holding the precious pot of food on his head. What happened to Nukamara, his chief friend? Poor thing, he had badly cut feet and several bruises. So John went over to help him to treat his injuries. He was their only casualty and everything from the canoe had been brought to the shore. Once with their friends though, the tenor men chose to stay put until there were, there's a better wind and tide and then you know they are able to ride home safely on the ship. John, what did he have to do? He had to go on. So he paid a man to help to carry, off the, carry the food and he set off for the mission station because that is where he planned to go. The mission station to see his other missionary friends. And here he was welcomed an hour later. So after he walked, all right, it took him an hour to walk and finally he met Mr. and Mrs. Madison. And Mr. and Mrs. Madison, they were very happy with the present, with the food that they were given. And they had gone through a lot when they are serving God, okay, that suffered from malaria, okay, that often made them very weak. And they had also regularly returned to Anatom to recover their health. But they were just like John because they loved the people. They loved to tell pe the people about the Lord Jesus. So once they felt better, they will come back to work with the people again. It's wonderful to be here with you both, John told them. I can't tell what, is a blessing, what a blessing it is to me just to speak in English, to be able to speak in your first language, the language that you're most comfortable in, that's most comfortable, and to eat a meal in your company. Mrs. Madison was very concerned for him. Do stay longer, John. You need to rest more because you walk. You had such a long walk here and your canoe journey was so terrible. What did John say? No, I have to get back or my house could be broken into again. They will break into my house and steal my things again. Night had fallen by the time he reached the spot where the canoe party had come ashore. John could find no one willing to travel with him for fear of the darkness. No one wanted to travel with him because it was very dark and there was still war going on. So no one wanted to walk with him by night. And they warned him, oh, you'll probably be killed if you try. But what did John say? John was not fearful. He said that this fear of darkness, because everyone is scared of darkness, so no one will be out here fighting. So he carried on. He went alone. And he walked near the shore for as long as he could, walking very fast. And once he heard voices coming towards him, when you hear voices coming towards you, given in John's position means you must be very careful. So what did he do? He hid in the bushes till all was quiet again. And then John went back to the shore because he knew that he can find a path where people will, you know, will usually walk. And that would get him where he wants to go. And all went well for a time until the path became much harder. So the path became much harder to walk and it was very steep. 
all right but john recognized where he was he recognized the surrounding and how did he walk continue his journey he grabbed whatever he do he can grab at the roots of the trees and he crawled most of the way because it's very steep if he were to walk normally he'll probably fall and he managed to reach the stop the top and he knew he must avoid a village this village where he'll be coming to is a very where is where a fierce tribe was living so he had to avoid them he don't purposely go near them so he went on his hands and knees all the way and then he followed a river bank okay and was very dark okay and because it's very dark he couldn't tell where he was one minute he thought that oh i'm very close to a river it sounds like a river but then he realized actually it's not the sound of water is the sound of the wind blowing the trees but it sounds that similar to the sound of the water in the river all right and then he managed to walk through and suddenly he saw light there was light flickering through the branches ahead why was there light he saw men who were sitting around the village fire he must have gone the wrong way and he had nearly walked into the very place he wanted to avoid this is the village where the fierce tribe was so thank God, right? So as quietly as possible, John moved away. And he tried his best to look ahead, though it's dark. He tried his best to look ahead and to concentrate. And he knew that a path from here would lead to the beach again. And by this time, he was very tired. You know, he's walking in the darkness and he was tired. All right. And he was fearful because he cannot see. He's afraid that once he walks off track, he will fall into the sea. That's very, very dangerous. Could take his life. And if he decided to wait at this area and not to walk and to wait for daylight to come, morning to come, what will happen? That fierce tribe will probably find him and that will probably mean that they will kill him. So he continued to climb further near the end of the rock. And then John remembered. He remembered that he saw a smooth, steep side to this rock. Okay, this path where he was walking when he was walking during daytime. So maybe he thought, okay, I can slide down. Okay, slide down safely to the shore if it's low tide. Okay, so what did he do? It was a very dangerous thing and he was not sure whether this would end up in him dying or, you know, being in a very serious uh, condition what did he do he prayed he asked god for help and protection john never forgot to pray and what did he, he do he tried to test okay he threw down several stones hoping to tell by their splash you know when you throw the stone into the water from a certain height you can hear by their splash whether it's high tide or low tide okay but it did not work so he tried throwing his umbrella down but that also did not work. So what did John do? He just has to go down trusting the Lord. Okay? So what did he do? He laid down on his back and with his head held tucked into his chest. His head went down into his chest like that. Okay? What did he do? He went down. And the short time his body was sliding down the rock felt as if it would go on forever. It was very probably very, very scary, right? And when his feet hit the water, John was relieved to discover that it was actually low tide. And he even found his umbrella. So John sang in his heart to the Lord. All right. And he walked homeward towards home along the shoreline. And when he was reaching quite near to his house, he saw two islanders, young islanders. Islanders means those who are staying on the island. And what did he do? He took a risk. Okay, anyone that you see actually means they injured. Okay, so he took a risk and he went forward where they could see him. And what did they do? At once, immediately, they lifted up their guns. So he called up to them, You know me! Hey, I know you! We know each other! Don't shoot me! My love to you, my friends. And he promised them, Oh, I'll give you some fish hooks. Okay, some hooks, okay, to when you're, you're fishing. Okay, so what did they do? Then they willingly guided John by a shortcut to his mission house. All right. And then John went to sleep and he had a very good sleep. 
When others heard the next day how he had come all that way in the dark safely, they were amazed. And they said, Surely if any one of us try to walk that way in the dark, we will be killed. And this is what they continue to say, Your God protects you and brings you home safely. See, they, they acknowledge that the God of John was a powerful God, was a real God. What did John say? Yes, said John. And if you obey and trust in my God, my God will help you too. Can your wooden gods see or hear? Can your idols see or hear? Can your stone gods speak to you? They can't. I want to share with you the good news of the Lord God, who always have time to listen to his people and will help them. Just like you, I felt how dangerous it was for me in the darkness last night. I also knew that my Lord was with me. And some of those who were listening to what John was saying, they nodded. And John was also thinking whether he would see them, those people that he just told them about the Lord, whether he would see them at Sunday worship service. Later that morning, an excited Abraham came running to John's house. The John Knox has arrived. There will be letters and messages from my home. John Knox is the ship, okay? John joined him and they both ran down to the boat. Not only were there letters from Abraham's homes, but from John's too, right? They were very excited because when this, this boat came in band that they would have things from their family, their loved ones back home. And John was so happy, right? He read through the letters that his family gave him and he read them again and again and he was so happy. And he thanked God. He thanked God that, you know, these Christians are so generous that's why you know these boats can be bought and these boats can come to the island to where he was living right so john had already written home about this okay so that means john when he gets the letter he will write back so this is where his family members back home will be able to read and to know what's happening in john's life so this is what john wrote Instead of the tribes being improved by contact with white men, they are made much worse. What does it mean? That instead, you know, the tribe people, that every day they will see white men. That means like John. John is a white man. Okay. They thought that, oh, because they are able to see white men every time, that they will be better. But instead, they become worse. Why is that so? The sandalwood traders, those people who sell sandalwood, those people who sell wood, okay, cut from trees, are cruel. It's because these white men are cruel, okay, not talking about the missionaries, but these people who are selling wood. They are cruel, they are wicked. And they have been bullying the islanders. They bully them, they rob them. And if these islanders try to resist, they don't want to listen to them, they will be shot dead. That's why the islanders have not become better because they have such a bad impression of the white men because of these traders. And this makes them all long for revenge on white men. This makes them all hate white men. They see white men and only they will think that, oh, white men are bad. All right? So it's because of these greedy traders. These greedy traders, all they care for is money that they can make, you know, and you know, from what they can sell. So this is what's happening. Nukamara turned up at John's house one morning in great excitement. He was very excited. Captain Winchester has built himself a house on our bay. He's giving all of us chiefs gunpowder, guns and ammunition. It is all going to be free. Oh no. Instead of discouraging them to fight, you're giving them all these. What does it mean? You encourage them to fight, right? To continue fighting. John had met this trader before. He's, this Captain Winchester is someone who sells, sells things. So John had met him before and wondered just what he was up to this time. And John went to, over to see him. And John asked him, Why are you giving these people things that will only lead to even more wars here? Asked John. And then the trader stared at him and then said, I have to make a living, you know, I have to earn a living, I have to make money. They won't trade with me their pigs and their, you know, their things that they have like they used to. This way, they will soon be ready to do anything for more ammunition. 
What's it got to do with me if they choose to use weapons to kill each other? Peace won't get me food on the table. Right? He's saying that if they don't fight with each other, that means that I will earn less money. It won't help me to survive. So what happened? John soon saw another outbreak of war. Another war happened. And sure enough, when they went to the trader for more powder, caps and balls for their guns, he would ask for a high price. Yes, I will sell to you, this trader. Tell them, I will sell to you, but you must pay me more. Because all he wants is money. And soon he was selling chicken and meat to passing ships at a large profit to himself. Miyaki, the war chief, at last realized how all his people had been tricked and he vowed revenge on Captain Winchester Miyaki, right? The naughty chief, huh? He was angry because you come and cheat my people. Wow, I'm very angry. So he said, I want to get revenge on this Captain Winchester. So what did he do? He sent his men, okay, to go, right, and to stand outside the trader's house, this man's house, and to threaten him with their guns. That night, a very surprised John opened his door to see this trader, this money-faced trader, okay, standing outside. He was very scared. Was now he's being threatened by Miyaki. Please, please let me stay here with you. I'm so scared of that man, Miyaki. He will harm me, I'm sure. My own servants are well armed. I have servants, right? They got guns, all that, but I can't really trust them. What did, how did John reply this trader? Should this trader deserve it, right? Because he's been deceiving, he's been making use of these islanders. He deserve it. What did John say? You have made use of these people cruelly. You made use of them. You've not been fair to them. You've been cruel to them. You don't care about their wives and their children getting hurt in all of this fighting that you have started. If I let you stay here, what will the tribes think? The tribes will think that I'm on your side. I'm not on your side. I do not agree with what you're doing. And my work as a missionary, I'm a missionary. My job as a missionary is to protect and to help them. So the trader, he was too afraid to live in his house and he decided to stay on his boat in the sea. And what happened to him? Did anything bad happen to him? No, he was finally rescued by a ship. All right? And this ship, the captain is also greedy and very bad to the islanders. So John was happy to see him leave. But what happened? The, because of the war that this uh, trader started by selling the ammunition, by selling the guns and so on, the war dragged on for a very long time. So after each battle, after each fight, each tribe would say, Oh, I want to revenge for all my people that have died. So they will, they will say they want revenge. So that's why the war is not able to stop. The fights are not able to stop. Because each time one tribe loses, that tribe will want to take revenge on the winning tribe. So it doesn't stop. Later that year, these traders, these people who sell, okay, like the white men, they showed their hatred of John. They hated John. Because John, what John is for, is always against what they stand for. And one sandalwood trade captain came with a terrible message for the tennis. All right. He pretended, he said, I don't want to trade with any one of you as long as this John the missionary stays here. And he's very cunning. He even says that I will give you things that you want if you will drive away, you will chase away Abraham and John or even kill them. You see how cruel, how sinful they were. And some islanders were driven, they were very angry by these traders. So after a trader... There was this trader who lived at another uh, place, okay? He treated a group of tennis very cruelly, so they took revenge, okay? They wanted to find a way to steal his things, right? Because they were very cruel. He was very cruel to them. And this was not easy to do because he had everything, he hid everything under his house. And he also slid over a trap door, okay? and had his house guarded by dogs, very fierce dogs. But the people were very clever. You, you know, you hide your things underneath, right? What would they do? They built a tunnel under the ground, in the ground. And then they built a tunnel, they dig, 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 all the way to this underground room 
where this trader keep all his things. And what happened? They steal his things. They steal his guns and all that. And they almost empty everything. And after that, the trader found out. But it was too late. They really took everything. Okay. And to John, what does John feel about these traders? These traders, yeah, they are very money face. They want to sell things to these islanders at great prices to, to you know, uh, deceive them, to bully them. But why are they like that? John realized that Don, Don, John should have probably known even, he, he did, he, you know, it's not now that he's realized. But John knew that the reason why they are like that is because they need the Lord Jesus Christ. These traders also need to hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, just like the islanders, just like the tennis. And what did he do? He will help them out whenever he could. Right? And he also allowed them and all passing ships to refill their water containers with fresh water. But when they wanted to do things that is not right, he would not help them. One day, a ship came to Tana, and this ship was very different from the others. The captain was an American, and John was very happy. Because why? Several of this captain's crew, many of this captain's crew, that means the, the people who worked on board this ship, were Christians. And the captain even invited John up to the ship, to preach to the people, to have a service. And the captain also wanted to help John. And when he realized that John's boat was damaged, he also even sent his carpenter to repair the boat. So you see how God had sent this wonderful help. And even though John had his difficult times, he also had times of blessing. God also gave him such wonderful times. And Nukamara was even attending John's Sunday services now. And John told them, If you read God's Word, God's Word is the Bible, if you read God's Word with me, it will give you strength to defeat the evil on this island. That's what John told Nukamara. And I know that saying verses when I keep on reminding myself of Bible verses, it helps me when I'm tempted to do wrong. Jesus Christ did that too when Satan tempted him to use his power to please himself. As a chief, your power is great and you can give your people happy, peaceful lives. A few days later, Nukamara came to tell John that some tribesmen were again planning to kill him. To everyone's surprise, what happened? People wanted to kill John. A chief stood up to defend John, all right? And he said that I will kill anyone who wanted to kill John. The man who wants to kill mission men will have to kill me first. My people and I will protect him and the mission teachers, even if it means that we die. And after he said this, those people who wanted to kill John, what did they do? They gave up their idea. You see, Nukamara, how our God leads us always. That chief had a brother who was injured in battle. When they told me, I walked to see him. I treated his wounds and nursed him. And he recovered well after that. And now his brother saves me from being attacked, said John. But Miyaki was not happy to let John go free in this way. A few nights later, he brought some of his men to the mission house. John was now keeping his clothes on. Whenever he sleeps now, he don't wear pajamas. He keep wear his normal clothes. Why? So that he can be ready to run whenever danger comes. On the first night, his dog gave a sharp bark and woke John. The next night, John was very tired. It was very hard for him to wake up. And his dog heard some men, okay, can hear some men creeping outside the house. And what did she do? She jumped up and she pulled at John's clothes and this soon woke him up. And then she turned her head to show where the men were lurking outside of the house. On the third night, John released Kruta outside his house and her barking and jumping quickly chased 
those men who were outside the house away. Although Nuka Mara was John's best and most trusted friend among the islanders, his long life as a cannibal chief often stopped him from telling others that he was a Christian. John saw how, why? Why is that so? Because John saw how, okay, they were controlled by fear. One chief, Kowiya, had gone to live on Anatom and became a Christian. That means there was this chief, Kowaya, he became a Christian. And he married an Anatom Christian girl. All right. And, and then he came as a teacher to Tana with John. But there became trouble because they try, okay, to tell him, hey, don't believe in Christianity. Don't believe in Christianity. Stop, stop. And they try to give him presents, okay. But he said, no, I will not go back to what I used to believe. I'll believe in Jesus. And then what did they do? They were threatened. Mm, I'll take away your land. I will take away uh, your position as a chief. And what did this man say? Take all. I will still stand by this mission man, okay, which is John. And I will still worship the one true God. And one morning at the local market, one of his men tried to cheat him. And then all the others began calling out insults, say bad things to him. And John was also there. Okay, and John was looking to see what will happen. So, Korea, Korea, even though his people were making fun of him, making th things difficult for him, what did he say? You think because I am a Christian, I have become a coward? No, I'm not. I am still your chief. Being a Christian does not take away courage, but gives me more. And what did he do? With that, he jumped to one man and talk, he, from that man, he took okay, this weapon from this man's hand. And what did he say? God makes my heart and arm strong. He makes Christians brave, but he also makes Christians to be men of peace. We don't want to fight. So what did, what happened? All his men then move away, they back away. They don't create trouble for him. And no one made fun of him again. In September 1860, two young Canadian missionaries, Mr. and Mrs. Johnston, joined John. So they joined John to work together, to serve God together on Tanner. And when they came, it was a rainy season, okay? And they also spend most of their time learning the language. They have to learn the language in order to minister to God's people, in order to serve with the people. And John and Mrs. Johnston sailed, okay, in that boat called John Knox to Black Beach, okay. And they left an anatom teacher and his family there to begin building a mission station. And having Christian workers to talk to and to pray with, was something that John enjoyed very much because all along, John was so lonely. And one morning, to John's surprise, he saw four ships at the harbour and soon he had visitors. One trader could hardly wait to pass on his news. We know how to bring down your prop tennis now. He wants to bring them down. He wants to defeat the islanders. Then John said, surely you don't mean that you want to attack and destroy these poor people? And what did this trader do? Say, we have sent the measles. Measles is a very horrible okay, illness to kill them off. We have landed four natives. I mean, four of uh, same kind of people. They already have measles. And we put them at four different pots so that they can spread this illness. That was a very cruel thing to do. What a dreadful thing to do. How can you purposely bring suffering to them? They have never even gotten this illness before. They won't be able to take it. They'll probably even die because of it, John said. What did the trader do? He only laughed. He didn't care. He only wanted these people to suffer and die. Our motto, my objective is to sweep away, to even get rid of all these people. And he called them creatures. How bad, how evil, how cruel. And what was his objective is to let us white men to take over this land it's a bad thing to do a cruel thing to do 
Just a few days later, Nukamara sent an urgent message to John. John, we need your help. Bring your medicine box. Why? The measles have arrived to the people. A strange, terrible illness has gotten to my people. So John and Mr. Johnston set off at once. Immediately they set off. They did what they could. But they, even in their own ability, they could not stop the illness. It spread quickly to the people, and the people had fever, sore throat, diarrhea. And the missionaries also took medicine and food and water to the villages. The anatom, the people in anatom were dying as quickly as the people in tennis. The family at Black Beach all died. And when the mission ship came to the island, the rest said they wanted to go home. The missionaries, some of them, they wanted to go home because they may also be infected. It's a truly a scary situation. Abraham watched as their boxes were loaded on the boat and he turned to John. John, will you stay here? Will you also leave like these missionaries because of your fear, because you're scared of this illness that may kill you? What do you think is John's reply? I think by now you should know what will be his reply. John said, I will stay here. Yes, I will stay here. I cannot leave the Lord's work now. I cannot leave God's work now just because there's this illness. Would you like me to stay with you? Will ask Abraham. Yes, said John again. But the danger is now so great that I cannot beg you to stay with me. And John's face, Abraham's face suddenly light up. I remain with you on my own free choice. I want to remain with you. No one forced me. And with all my heart, we will live and die together doing the work of God. A New Year's Day entry in Mr. Johnston's journal told how dreadful those days were. Mr. Johnston was the missionary, so he wrote, he also will write in his journal like a diary. And he wrote about these measles, how bad the situation was at the time. Measles are making fearful confusion. Everyone is so confused, it's so chaotic amongst the tennis people. In some villages, few are left able to prepare food or carry water to the suffering and dying. Most are suffering, most are dying. And I carry a bucket in one hand and medicine in the other. And we take our medical care back home, for granted, back home where he came from. Because these people here, you know, are so happy that we are here to help them. And John will also give them advice on how to be clean, how to take care of themselves. And those who follow John's advice, they seem to recover better. After their evening worship that night, Mr. Johnston, he saw two men with huge weapons outside a window. And John went out to them and asked them what they wanted. And what did they say? I want medicine for a sick boy. And then John said, okay, come inside and take it. But John sensed he can feel that that was not really the reason why they had come to his house for. And they were holding on to their weapons when they came to the house. So John prepared the medicine. Eh? but they didn't want to take it. And John said very firmly, you see that Mr. Johnston is now leaving and you too must leave this room for tonight. Tomorrow you can bring the sick boy or collect the medicine. Outside the door, Mr. Johnston had bent down to lift a little kitten that, that had escaped through the open door. At that moment, one of the tennis men he came with his weapon and he you know, tried to hit Mr. Johnston's head. So these men came for this reason, okay, for the wrong reason. They came not because they really, you know, uh, needed medicine for someone. And Mr. Johnston avoided it and he fell to the ground and both men jumped on him. Kruta jumped ferociously, fiercely in their faces and he saved Mr. Johnston's life. And he called out a warning to John. He quickly warned John because John is inside. John don't know what was happening. Be careful. These men have tried to kill me and they will kill you. John faced the two men and he spoke very fiercely, firmly to them, 
What do you want? He does not understand your language. Mr. Johnston does not understand your language. Speak with me. Talk to me. And both of them, they raised their weapon to try to hit John. But once again, John's dog protected him. So they were scared of the dog and the two men ran away. A few weeks later, one of Miyaki's men came to the mission house and at this time, John was cutting wood. He silently swung a gun in his hand and followed John about. While trying to keep an eye on him, John was keeping an eye on this man, okay, right? Because this man, he definitely means harm and he had a gun. What happened? While he was trying, John was walking and trying to keep an eye on this man, he accidentally lost his grip on his tool. He was holding something and then the tool slipped and cut his ankle. He cut his own ankle. And when this happened, what did the, that man do? That man walked away quickly and said, I didn't do that. And this, in this accident, okay, that John had dropped his tool on his leg, what, what happened? What did it result in? John had cut the bone badly. Okay, that means the, the, the bone on his leg was, was, was uh, cut. So he could not carry on visiting the sick. So when Mrs. Johnston came to tell, then Mrs. Johnston came to tell him that her husband was very ill. So John had to be carried to him because he couldn't walk. So Mr. Johnston was very ill. And John was with him, John came, and Mr. Johnston was called home to be with the Lord. And this made John very sad too, because Mr. Johnston was with him, working with the Lord for the Lord. And it was soon clear, it became so clear that nearly a third of the tennis had been killed by the measles. So many were killed by this illness. John's friend and helper, Kowiya, was also seriously ill. Remember this Kowiya, this chief who had come to know the Lord, he was also very sick. His chief and his wife and children had already died. And he came to see John to ask for a Christian burial. I'm happy looking to Jesus. One thing only makes me sad now. He said, I'm happy to go to Jesus. I'm very sick now. I know that probably, yes, I will die. And I'm looking forward. I'm not scared. I'm not scared to die because I know where I'm going. I'm going to see the Lord Jesus, whom I believe in. But the only thing that makes me sad now is that God is taking us all away from Tanner and will leave my people as idolatrous as before. That we will all die here, maybe the, all the Christians. And then the people, how? The people will not have anyone to, to tell them the gospel and they will all worship idols. They will be in darkness again. So you see, even Kowiya, when he was near death, he was worried. He was concerned about the salvation of his people. And Kobiya told John, pray for them, please. I'm very near death now. I know I'm dying. This illness will get me. We will meet again with Jesus. He said, I, I know that as long as we believe in Jesus, I will see you again. M me going now is just a temporary thing. We'll meet each other again. And these were his last words to John. So we thank God for the lesson today and next month god willing we will go to the next chapter so what are the lessons that we have learned from today's lesson on the south sea island rescue by john g payton just two points god is always our protector and helper we do not have to be afraid if god has allowed us to be in a certain situation god knows god knows best Go to Him. Don't be afraid. God will always be our protector and our helper. And point two, just as we see the example of Kowiya, Kowiya came to know the Lord and he, his life, even though it may not be a long one after he came come to know the Lord, but through it, he bore good testimony for the Lord. Even when he was dying, he was not afraid to die because he knew he would see Jesus. So we have this hope as Christians 
as those who have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that we will see Jesus when we leave this earth. We have this wonderful hope that God's word has reminded us, has told us, and we do not need to be afraid to die. So we thank God for this lesson, and we pray that God will help us, keep us very close to Him. Let us pray. Our gracious Lord and Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for this lesson, even on the example of John Payton. Father, we thank you for the examples that we have learned from, and we pray, Father, that you will help us to always trust in thee, to protect us, to guide us, to know that you are in control. And even as your children, our life is in your hands and you already have everything planned out for us. And all we have to do is to trust in thee. And we pray, Lord, that you continue to be with the children, even help them, Lord, to keep close to thee. We pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.